who are going to be the leaders of the three main parties after the next election? Because there are a lot of candidates, also depends on the result of the election, uh, but already there are a lot of prominent people positioning themselves very well. I think, for example, in the Liberal Democrats, it's very obvious that Tim Farron, who is the party's president, is slowly and carefully positioning himself to get the leadership either after the next election or maybe midway through the next parliament, because Nick Clegg is not the most popular of political figures at the moment, although he has succeeded slightly in being able to keep most of the organisation of the Liberal Democrat party together, although perhaps not the voting base that's entirely divided up now. So I think that Tim Farron is certainly in the position because he's not in the government, therefore he won't be tied to any way, and I think that he is really the only credible candidate after the next election, because although Vince Cable is, his name is often used as a probable next leader, I think that because he's, a lot of people don't realise he was already acting leader before, and also he is, I, w I wouldn't say he's too old, because I don't really, th I think there is a lot of ageism within the leadership of um, political parties, most notably with uh, Menzies Campbell, when he was forced out of the Liberal Democrat leadership because he was called being too old. Well, I don't really think that was the case. I think that Vince Cable isn't too old, but I do think as a political figure, his influence has waned quite a bit and I think that his time has passed to be able to grasp leadership. And I think Tim Farron is you almost uniquely positioned as a powerful figure within the party who is not tied to the coalition as such. In the Labour Party, well, it largely depends on whether they win or lose the next election, because if they win the next election, I think it's quite certain Ed Miliband's going to be their leader, because at the moment there isn't really, even though he isn't as strong or as strict a leader as Tony Blair was, or almost author hugely authoritarian leader, although he did have to put up with Gordon Brown, but he kept his only real opponent firmly under him. and. Gordon Brown wasn't as charismatic a politician as Tony Blair. With Ed Miliband, there, well, there isn't really a more charismatic politician there, and th there isn't really a more popular figure there, because David Miliband has gone now, I think, for at least five years, or however long he is, uh, at International Rescue. Um, I think he was his only real possible rival. Uh, Ed Balls just isn't popular with the general public. He's, he's barely popular enough to be Chancellor of the Exchequer or Shadow Chancellor. Uh, I think the leader of the party is not capable of doing that at all. Um, Yvette Coupeau, Ed Balls' his wife, is possible, but I don't really think that she could quite get it because they, people don't really like Ed Balls, and I think Ed Balls is really holding back for her. There's Chukaramuna, the Shadow Business Secretary, so I think he wants to try to describe himself as a British Barack Obama in terms of change and reform and a charismatic figure. And I think he is certainly very ambitious and will probably feature in the next Labour leadership contest, although he might not win it. There is, of course, if events were to suddenly take a turn, long shot would be Alistair Darling because he is a relatively trusted figure. He might not be seen as a particularly popular Chancellor of the Exchequer, but he is a competent politician, which is more than you could say for the vast majority of politicians of all parties, even minor parties. Uh, in the Conservative Party, it is a lot more interesting because the Conservative Party has a tendency for ruthlessness that isn't found in any other political party in Britain. I mean, the two of their long-serving leaders in 1975 and 1990 were kicked out. And in 1995, there was another interesting leadership contest that they've had. A lot of interesting leadership contests, and the last one was really quite a bit of a letdown because it was really only a two-horse race with one horse not racing so much David Davis didn't really have the impetus of David Cameron. 
so I think the next leadership election though is going to be interesting because there's a lot of people maturing as leadership figures. I mean, most notably I would say is William Hay, who was, although he's already been leader, uh, was really leader before his time had really come. I think he didn't really expect to be leader. I think he expected Michael Portillo to be leader. Uh, but I think now he is just entering the stage as a uh, as a mature politician and as a slightly more respected politician than he was before. But I, I don't think he can deliver the Conservatives any kind of big majority if he were leader. And I think if he were leader, it would be more of an acting leader to bring the party together. And well, as Foreign Secretary, it's often got quite a lot of respect for any Foreign Secretary uh, is respected automatically. So I, I think he's got quite a, a, a good standing there. There's also Theresa May, another holder of a great office of state. Uh, who is already being mentioned as a possible future leader and who certainly got a lot of the characteristics of a future leader of any political party. But I think her main weakness is simply that... Well, whenever you see her, or it certainly applies to me, you think of M from James Bond, largely with conservative female MPs, you find that they tend to, to be patronising, grandma-ish, and tend to try and do their best impression of Margaret Thatcher they can possibly do, because that's the only thing they seem to be able to do to try and be ambitious. Whereas in the Labour Party, they usually either tend to be feminists of the Harriet Harman type, or they tend to be ambitious figures of the Hazel Blears type. Uh, so in the Conservative Party, though, women have always at much more of a disadvantage, even though the Conservative Party is the only one who's had an elected female leader. Because that leader was so influential, they're always going to be compared to her and are never going to make up with the myth. But other political figures, of course, are long shot would be someone as Adam Afrie, who was mentioned uh, several months ago as a possible stalking horse against David Cameron when things were going quite badly uh, earlier in the year. Uh, but I think it, it was more of a silly season story than a serious uh, challenge for the leadership. And another one a lot of people think about is George Osborne, but I'm ruling him out immediately because he's really the only person to get booed at the Olympics. He's not, he, well, he's almost entirely dependent on David Cameron for support within the country, within the party and within the coalition. He is entirely married to David Cameron politically and I think if David Cameron goes, he will go and retire to a lordship and a nice country house. Another one mentioned in the Conservative Party would be Rory Stewart, who some people would have heard of because he was a former governor in Afghanistan uh, during the war, and it also did a documentary series about Lawrence of Arabia and how that relates to the situation in Afghanistan. And it's certainly, I would almost be willing to bet money as the next shadow foreign secretary, or certainly a minister at the Foreign Office because he has a lot of Foreign Office experience that I don't really think any major or any junior figure uh, in any political party has at the moment. So I'd certainly say he's future Shadow Foreign Secretary and possibly a future leader of their party. Uh, but on the whole, the next leadership contest for whichever party loses the next election, it'll be interesting. Although I do think that if Labour loses the next election, uh, that Ed Miliband will remain as leader, certainly for a year or two after the next election, because none of the other figures have really built up the kind of wide-ranging base. I mean, if you look at the 2010 Labour leadership contests, it was really only a two-horse race between the Miliband brothers. All, all the other candidates were relatively minor and weren't considered serious candidates. I mean, Diane Abbott wasn't really considered the next leader of the Labour Party or Andy Burnham or Red Bulls. Uh, but either of the Miliband brothers could have. And since one Miliband brother has gone, there was only one left. And he, I think, although he's at a distinct weakness because of the election system, uh, I think he will 
remain as leader for at least another three or four years.